welcome to Renewing the Mind podcast. Obviously, you can see we got a special guest here. Lisa is joining us on the podcast for the first time ever. How are you doing, Lisa? First time ever. I'm ready. Perfect. Dad, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling like back in the day at NDSU, we had a saying. It goes like this, like those who stay will play. Those who play will be champions. Once a champion, always a champion, baby. Let's go. And there's the weird ring kiss. It's dope. What do you mean weird? <laughs> dope and mean. Yes. That's the yes. word I was looking for. Dope. And let's just get it out of the way. <laughs> What's it? <laughs> the elephant in the room. <laughs> my uh, it. my crown fell off while I was eating a hamburger. And no, I did not bite the hamburger. I was ripping off pieces. <laughs> and, uh, and then I chomped it in the middle of chewing my hamburger. So it was in pieces. Therefore, I can't put it back in. So, so it Abraham, gets what's up? Worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a gap there. It's real cold to the, to the air and breathing it in. And then it gives me a mean, mean lisp. Uh, <laughs> So, but here's what I was saying. We were talking about it, you know, cause when it fell off, we, I called dad and said, what should we do? And talk to Alicia. And here's, here's the thing. We've been talking about this podcast for a week now, two weeks. We've been preparing. We got a lot of great questions, a lot of awesome content and why let a little lisp, well, a big lisp and a tooth fall out, uh, affect what we believe God's going to do here today. And that's why we share it. And that's why we ask you to share it because we believe that the content we are producing is life changing and that's what we want to get across is that lives will be changed in the midst of me having uh this so all right did you get it shared dad uh well, there it is did you get it shared uh no i'm okay. pulling it up now <laughs> hey smiths are here abraham it happens to the best of it it definitely does are you going to tell people who Lisa is? Oh, great. Good. Yeah, good. That's from the wife. Lisa, tell us who you are, why you're on here. Give us a little snippet. Okay. Well, you may have to actually tell me why you want me on here, but I am a licensed Because you're a team member. An expert. And no, I'm so excited when I, I was like almost jumping out of my skin when he was like, no, for real. Like you can be on, <laughs> you can be on this one. Yeah. Uh, what? So... Um, I did move uh, to Sioux City, Iowa in February, so it's officially been over eight months now. It's not five anymore. Yes. Um, it's you haven't scared eight. you away. <laughs> I got a real name tag. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's official. Um, I really love it. So, I don't know what else. I mean, I came out here by myself. And you work where? Oh, I work at Renewing the Mind Clinic with uh, your father. Gotcha. Yes. And, and what do you do there? I'm a licensed mental health counselor. So I work with a lot of trauma, depression, anxiety, and a little bit of everything in between. Yes. Awesome. I think my camera just shut off. It did. Uh, yeah, you went dark. Oh, okay. Hold on. Okay. Getting it up. And running. All right. Shared. You're back. Did, did my can't. Oh, am I, am I there? You're yeah, back. You're good. You're good. Okay. I'm back. You're back. Wow. Okay. Ooh, that was scary. I like to I stopped figuring out what to say. Cause you were like gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I I'm officially scared, about so, myself. Yeah. 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 All right. and that, uh, that's good. I like that. We'll get into it probably a little bit more. Sure. Uh, who you are, maybe through some of these questions, dad, you got it shared. Uh, yes, I did. That was, that was a little, did you see that? Did you see that? That was a little, little iffy answer. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. All right. So first thing we're going to talk about, pull the mugs out. Da, da, da. Wait. Right. There it is. There we go. Facing the wrong direction. Oh, there we go. Man. Bam. Ooh. Oh, why does it keep messing my autofocus? Oh, Cheers. There. Oh. There you go. Very nice. Okay. I have a straw in mine because my tooth, <laughs> I got drinking on the other side. 
<laughs> Otherwise, it hurts. Bro, you got to put that on the list for Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to start talking like this so no one can see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so Paul, would... put it on the list. His two front if you would like a, listen, If you would like a mug, comment, message us, get a hold of us. They're $15. They're 16 yes. ounce mugs. Straw they're, is not included. Straw is not included. <laughs> And uh, they're beefy. They're, they're really big. beefy mugs. Yes. They're, they're, they're solid. solid feel. They're solid, yep. They're matte black with gloss. Um, 16 ounces. Renew, yeah, renew, move, find. And then the podcast logo with obviously um, renew, move, find on there as well. So let us know if you would like a mug. We definitely will get you one if you're local. If not, then we can figure out how to ship it to you and what those costs would be. All yes. right. Today we're yes. talking about boundaries. Hop, hop, let's just jump right into it. What, what are we talking about today, Dad? All right, so boundaries. So basically, it's like one of those things where you like just the who, what, when, where, how kind of thing. So the very first thing is like boundaries are to define what you're comfortable with. So that's the what. What am I comfortable with? The second piece is how I would like to be treated and how I would not, not like to be treated. And then the third part is where boundaries are where one person's personal space ends and the next person's begins. So just a quick question. I asked this with Ty and Lisa just before we started. I'm like, if you enter a room like a social party, a gathering, and you come into the room, let's say with just chips and you know a drink, and you're going to sit on the couch, but you see two people on the edges and there's one space in between, do you sit in between them? Or do you just like look around and like grab a chair from the living room or dining room and slide it into the room? That's a quick boundary space issue. So people who have got pretty open boundaries, of course, they plop down. And even though you're rubbing shoulders, they're like, what's up? This is awesome. They, they don't even, it doesn't even rub them. Like what? And then, so if you have a more tight circle, if they touch your shoulder, you're kind of inching over like, bro doesn't even know, like he's all on me. Okay. That's a small little boundaries issue. And just think about it. So if I'm open boundaries, I sit down, I don't even think about it. I would just reach across Lisa's face and maybe even bump her arm and like put my, my drink over her on the, the end table. If I'm the person with no with, with tight boundaries, I'm going to sit in the middle, maybe if they only see, and I'm going to put my shoulders inward to make sure I'm not touching anybody because I know what my tight boundaries are, and I'm just anticipating other people have a tight boundary. So that's just a quick example of what that looks like. Lisa, where are you on that spectrum? Um, definitely holding my own space pretty tightly. Uh, kind of cringe to think. Uh, if I were to look at the couch, I guess I'd have to see how much space I have to see if they're talking. I'd have to kind of acknowledge, yeah. are they people I like? Are they like, you want to be that I close to them? So I'd actually probably be the one pulling up a chair and maybe waiting for them to say like, we saved the spot for you. So, yeah, yep. I would be the one that pulls up a chair or stands uh, against the wall. And then when they say, oh, this spot's for you, I'd say, I'm me. I'm okay. That's yeah. Okay. That's, uh, I can't do that. Yeah. And my, my thing, my thing would be like, it, it depends on two pieces. Like if it's two females, I probably wouldn't sit there. If it's comfortable people like, you know, Lisa and somebody I'm close with or I know I'd be fine. So I'd kind of look at my circles defined by how close you are, you know, how emotionally, like, do I know you or not? That kind of thing. Yeah. It's so I can kind of go either way. Josh Carpenter, who I went to college with at Evangel, said, I have no boundaries. Definitely need to work on this. And I What's would up, Josh? So I Josh is the dude. So Josh is, Okay. Okay. So Josh is the dude who comes around the corner. He's got, he, he's got a Coke in his hand. He's got some chips, you know, and he's got, he's ready for the Super Bowl party. And he doesn't plop on your lap, Ty. He'd be like, what's up? Yeah. Jo Josh was the dude that he would come into your, your dorm room. And if you were laying in bed, he'd come sit on the bed. What's up, dude? You sleeping? <laughs> yes that was my was. college roommate yes I'm a bounce on you yeah and uh my other college buddy chase fowler is the exact same way he, the dude's got no boundaries <laughs> zero <laughs> and by the way look uh we got to say this it's not that one is better than the other it's a comfort zone yeah. it's like you know you like some people wear flip-flops like all year round even in the winter you're just comfortable with it. And some people don't even wear flip-flops. You know right. what I'm saying? It's a comfort zone thing. Yeah. I uh, I definitely run into that at church. You got the the close talkers. You know, they're like, they're right here. 
and then mm-hmm. as you back away, they come, and then you back away, and they come, and you back away, and yes. they come, and you back away, and they come, and you're like, you know, it's it, it's not right or wrong, like you said, either way. But I'm like, you can before even social distancing. <laughs> Whoa, that list came out big on social distancing. Bro, guess what? Mike Tyson just joined the podcast. What up, Mike? Social you know you're my dog. All right, continue. Definition. Anything else? Uh, those are the three pieces. All right. And then, uh, Lisa, you got a, like a visual for us. I do. All right. In the meantime, Josh said, Tyler used to kick me off his couch. So, uh, so much. Uh, <laughs> definitely. At least yes. said Stella would sit down, no doubt and talk your ear off. Right. Yes. Agreed. Age, age appropriate, right? Like just That's, learning. Yeah, no boundaries. She's mm-hmm. learning. She's learning. <laughs> All right, Lisa, show us what you got. So what I have with me, I'm not really going to be able to show all of it, but um, just a pretty like nylon rope. It's got glitter in it. I didn't really mean to say it was pretty, but whatever. Okay. So we're going to take this rope and visualize kind of being able to see it represent, obviously, as a boundary. Um, I do want to at least distinguish the experience of saying a boundary is not a wall but it can quickly maybe become one depending on what happens with our our boundaries that we set out. So in this exercise or example, you take the rope and place it around you sitting, standing, however you feel comfortable. So you take that time and just look at it, make whatever adjustments you need to make. Sometimes there are micro adjustments and sometimes there's like really big like No, like when I did it, I tried and I thought, well, this is great. And then I thought, nope, I actually need my back facing the wall. I don't really want my back open to anything. I need to know what's behind me. And then I create, you know, my boundary around me, in front of me and on my sides. And so as I do that, I am paying attention to, hey, I feel kind of pretty relaxed in this space. Some people might call it my bubble. You might call it like just your felt sense of safety. Um, It's really important that you recognize that it's your own felt sense and not someone else's over you. Does that make sense? Like if I were to tell you, Dr. Sanchez, like there's no reason for you not to feel safe. Like I'm a really safe person. I'm amazing, right? And you're like, I don't know you. You're, I don't know. You know, so I, I'm going to keep my space for now because I don't, you know, I don't know that about you. Um, so for me to tell you that is, is a violation of sorts because you're not actually feeling safe. Um, I think we do it a lot, uh, with people, right? Like there's no reason for you to be hiding. Like it's safe, right, Tyler? So We have this boundary, and then in this example, we're going to talk about a boundary violation, at least in this example, and say, I'm going to use, I'm going to use this really pretty coaster to put inside of your boundary that you created. So I'm just going to drop it in. And when that gets dropped in, you can have several responses. So I guess I'll kind of pose some questions to you as far as what would you do if you had your circle, you felt good, we're all as well, we're talking, we're at peace, we're comfortable, and I just drop something in your circle. What do you do? Yeah, well, the, 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 either first, one of yeah, the first thing is you have to address what just happened. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, there's got to be some address to like what just happened. Do you know what I mean? And then the second thing, it depends on, it depends on how serious that boundary is. Again, somebody touched you awkwardly. Somebody squishes up on you inside, you know, an elevator, something like that. Or like if I'm doing my workout, I got my headset on. Stacy thinks it's funny to come down and touch me while I'm doing a plank or working out. And it's, I got music blaring and I'm sweating and then I jump and then she thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. Like mm-hmm. that's a boundary violation, but I'm looking at her, I'm like, what? And sometimes I come at it a little too hard and pull your headset off and like, what? And then she's like, chill out, just asking a question. But, you know, and so that's the thing. It depends, right? Sure. But you have to be aware. You have to be aware of, do I come at that really hard or really aggressive? 
or am I just going to ask a question and do an assessment like what's happening? Yeah, I would ask those. And then I would also ask who did it? You know, who, who's the one that dropped it in my boundary? Is it a spouse? Is it a sibling, stranger, boss? That would also depend on my reaction as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, again, in this example, I didn't really ask permission. I did not say, hey, like, can you take this for me? Like, I really, I honestly just dropped it in. Um, I didn't tell you what it was. I didn't really, but it's just this idea of this extra you actually didn't ask for it. So I'm, I'm thinking in your head, like, like you said, like, what is this? Like, I, I didn't ask for this, but I'm like, but it's really pretty. Like, don't you want it? Um, you're like, no. Yeah. Um, but a, a no boundary, a no representing. I don't like that. You put that in there. Some of my my personal initial response would be like, I want to whack that thing away. Like I, I didn't ask for that. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what this is. Like, what do you want? Um, but what happens is I can I can actually ask permission and say, Hey, I have this thing. Would you be able to take it? Um, and you might actually say yes. So you might give me permission to come into that space and give you that but you may actually not like it. And so it's important to recognize even with permission, we can actually override those boundaries of like, no, I told you I wasn't, I wasn't taking that. Um, and that can get us in trouble as well. So it's slightly different yeah. direction of conversation, but I think it's important to recognize that we can say, yeah, like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. You can sit there. You can, you can have that spot but yeah. I really didn't want you to sit there. Yeah. And so Lisa, what would you say to somebody who says yes, but wants to say no? Like, do you really want to take this? And you're like, uh, yeah, but you don't really mean, yeah, you mean, you want to say no, but I don't want to offend you. What would okay. you say to that person? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a good question. So I'm like, I know, I know what that feels like. Yeah. See, that's, um, the, and, and, and obviously again, listen very carefully, everybody, no right or wrong answer. Yeah. Again, that's going to like, okay, do you know how much that person can handle? No. Is it worth you saying no? What's well, the consequence of you saying no? Right. Sure. But I think you like handle the, that word capacity comes up for me as well. And recognizing how to build your capacity and say, actually, I don't have time for that, but I can assertively tell you, try again next week or, you know, so is not to no. oftentimes I think gets perceived as rejection, right? You don't like me. Yes. You said, no, I don't matter to you. Um, right. It's important to me. And it's like, well, how do, how do we build in this assertive communication with boundaries and saying, I'm with you. I just, I can't do it this week. That's too much. I've, I've already got four intakes. Yeah. Like put them next week, but this week I can't. Yeah. Very one good. Thing, one, one thing you said in your example that uh, I feel like we do a lot is we tell people how they should feel. Yeah. And I think that that's what you mentioned was that, you know, you're like, no, I'm safe. I'm okay. Trust me. You're okay. You shouldn't feel that way. Cause it's me or cause you know, I'm telling you how to respond in that way. And I think that goes with boundaries and with anything else, Absolutely. you know, no, Lisa, you should be fine. I'm okay. I can sit next to you. It's not like I'm sitting on your lap, you know, or we say things like, it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm doing like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, like, chill out. I'm just okay. on the couch, you know? And it's like, boundaries are personal. And Correct. I'm, I, I can't tell you what your boundary is and you shouldn't be able to tell me. And that goes with anything, you know, anxiety or fear or success. Um, I wish we had a horn. When you said yeah. boundaries are personal, we could be like, wah, 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 wah. Hey, hey, if you'd like to donate to the Renewing the Mind podcast to buy me a roadcaster, <laughs> yeah, there you go. $199. And then I can wah, have a pause button. I can have a, <laughs> eh, 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 I mean, boundaries are personal. I wanted to hit a like button. Like, and or if you could donate to my tooth. Okay. The other thing <laughs> we do is um, we, we push that upon people even in success. So me and my buddies were talking today or last week about, just what's your idea of wealthy and what's your idea of being successful. And that's yeah. different for everyone. Same right. thing with boundaries. It's different for everyone. So I really like that. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to follow up on that, Dan? No, I think that's, that's hundred percent. So, and the idea in this, and this is where we have to kind of just understand 
like the whole, everybody it's cliche now, but stay in your lane, like know who you are because you attract your right people. But that's really hard. If you look across the way and you hear somebody bragging about what's true success, and then you like give up your drive and your successes and you can't do that because you're different personalities. You have different, again, personal boundaries, all those yep. personal pieces become wrecked and then you're really lost. You don't know who you are. All right. Let's hop into some questions. Okay. Um, Brianna asked on Facebook says, that's me talking about always saying yes. She said, always say yes, but sometimes I don't want to just yeah. always want to be nice and helpful. And I feel bad when I say no. Yeah. I so a that's a big one. Go ahead, Lisa. No, I was just saying, I hear that almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I would love to be able to say in this experience that a, a boundary is meant for both you and the other person, right? Going to the idea of that's where I end and that's where you begin. Like there's a distinguishing mark here. 100%. And we think that if we put boundaries that we're being mean or selfish or we're not kind, and I think we're actually doing a disservice. I personally believe we do a disservice um, as someone who has personally had to let go of a lot of boundaries from childhood, I just kind of deleted my circle. Like I just mm -hmm. stepped outside of it and someone else took my circle. Um, and working through that and saying like, you don't actually get to take my circle. Um, it's doing a disservice to other people and they won't learn that that's not okay. You, we have yeah. to be able to grow in saying, I'm saying no, because I care about you. Yeah. I can't say yes all the time. I have to say no to let you know you matter to me. Right. And your health matters. So and no, I can't, I can't yeah. do 500 jumping jacks for you to win $10. Like I can't do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm going to jump in really quick on the assertiveness piece. So sometimes people feel assertive is aggressive. And yeah. especially if you're assertive and outspoken, like for example, Stella or Valencia, they're both outspoken. And if they're assertive and outspoken, like they're telling a story, they can look like they're going to walk on you or they'll dominate a conversation or something. But that's really being assertive. So if you take a look at the pin, assertive is dead center balanced. And so people who say yes, when they want to say no, they're all the way on the side where they're passive and passivity wrecks me. I, I get my circle stolen because somebody else is going to slide and take more and more and more and more of my space and I have nothing. So what ends up happening is these people melt down or they blow up or they just hide and can, can completely just lose their circle. Okay. And then over here, the aggressive person, they just, they're the takers. And so they'll take, 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 take because, and then I'll check. Are you okay? Are you okay with this? I'm safe. Like, you know, just let me know. And <laughs> the quiet person won't say anything. Right. And right. so, so we have to just all move toward assertive. So the aggressive person has to move toward assertive. You know, the passive person has to move toward assertive. And as we all move in, we get along. And that's why, you know, that, that's a beautiful statement. Like the boundary is for both. It's not a rejection. Right. Right. I beautiful. Like um, oh, Lisa. Alisa, uh, Alicia oh, uh, <laughs> asked. When do you know a boundary is being crossed or is it just something that rubs you the wrong way? We had another Ooh. question that came in that said, that's good. Um, a pet how do you know, question, right? Yeah. Yeah. It said, how do you know if, the, if it's a boundary versus your personal pet peeve? So that, let's just knock both of those out. Same question. Yeah. So the, di the difference is like the pet peeve is something you've just labeled it a pet peeve, <laughs> but, but a pet peeve is a boundary. You see what I'm saying? It's just a word. So they're the exact same thing. So if something bothers you, it's a boundary, right? So the question that I would have is like, how does a boundary become a pet peeve? And that might be because I don't have, I don't have a doorway or permission to say something to that person. Or if I say something to that person, I get rejected or I, you know, it becomes a fight. So I don't, I just hold it. So while I'm holding a boundary, that becomes a pet peeve. Like now I'm just, I'm, I'm ticked about it. Do you see what I'm saying? So I would say this, the pet peeve is a boundary that's been, been sub, sub uh, like suppressed that you're just, you're just not actually expressing another name for it. Correct. Sweet. All right. Well yeah. Good question. Oh, well said. All right. Yeah. Um, Yolanda said, love the podcast. Uh, like I truly appreciate all this in information. Lisa said, great point. Boundaries are for both people involved. Uh, that's good for parents to keep in mind when their child is someone who is wayward. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Another question. I have an ex that views my boundaries as resentment and unforgiveness. Being confident and assertive is boundaries can be tough, but necessary. Yes. Yes. Tough and necessary. And look, remember, none of this is right versus wrong. It's just space and personal pieces. So as you start to move into that assertiveness, there's an absolute power in freedom. I can say it and I don't feel bad about it because I'm protecting me. I can say it and feel good about it because now, because I have more emotional energy, I can take care of my kids and my wife and my life, my health, whatever it is. So having the personal boundary allows me to have freedom and choices. And like anything else in life, the more I practice it, I become skilled. And so some people are just like, man, I wish I was like, yeah, I wish you could just say no and just be assertive, but it's not about me. It's I say that so I can have time with my daughter. You get that? I say that well, so you, I can ha have time with something else. There was a season in your life that you didn't say no. Yes. Facts. So it's not like you've always done that. Correct. That's where the there practice was a time where you felt bogged down and overwhelmed and you had to start saying no to be able to say yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, I missed a lot of time with you. Dinner stuff, right? That's mm -hmm. when you, you came home I from college. It. You came up from, okay, your very first fall break from Evangel and you're like, dad's home? Since when does dad come home for dinner? Mm. Yeah. That was hard. That like, I pretended to like, just like it shrugged it off, but I was like, dang, should have put mm -hmm. on my nut cup. Mm hmm. That's why I see. That's why I see my own psychologist. <laughs> okay, uh, Crystal Alicia. said, "From my experience, as I become confident in who I am and what I what I want, boundary setting becomes easier." Dude, say that again. Yeah, please well, say that again. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard. It's hard <laughs> I'm to not read. It's hard say to it. read my tooth missing. Sorry. Uh, no, she said, from my experience, as I become confident in who I am and what I want, boundary setting becomes easier. Facts. Dude, that could be a plaque. That's yeah. good. You know the mind, plaque. Boom. Um, all right. So all this kind of leads into the main point. The only okay. thing I bring, I narrate and uh, I'm the MC and then I bring one golden nugget uh, show. Here's my golden nugget. Here we go. And this is something me and Alicia lived by after Stella. So after okay. we had Stella, we realized that <clears throat> you either seemingly possibly offend someone or you get offended. Let me, let me kind of work that, that a, a second. Okay. So in situations where people are crossing boundaries against us, we leave mad, offended, hurt, taken advantage of, we feel that. Or I feel like if I'm going to have the conversation with you, then you are going to leave offended, mad, angry, sad, or hurt. Whether those are kind of the both worst case scenarios. But for instance, like when we had Stella, we brought her to church and everyone's just like kissing on her and grabbing her hands and going like in her face and like spitting. And I'm just like, I just sat there and didn't know what to do. And it was either like, I say like, no, you're not going to kiss my child or I leave and I'm just angry and offended by everything that they've done because boundaries that I would like to have put in place, I never did. And so we always say, hey, you either going to have the conversation and potentially maybe hurt feelings. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Or we leave and our feelings are hurt. Correct. Yeah. That's and so in that, in, in that setting, we, we want to have the tough conversations because then if we don't, we begin to resent the people that keep crossing the boundaries against us. So if every time I come around Lisa and she spits on my kid and kisses and licks her hands, I'm going to eventually want to avoid Lisa with all, with everything we got. So then that becomes a rift in between this relationship, whether if I could just have that uncomfortable conversation, now Lisa knows not and how not to cross my boundaries. I feel more comfortable coming around him and it, or around her. And it's a benefit for the whole relationship. But, sure. but a lot of times we're not willing to have that tough conversation because a lot of them, they are tough. It's hard to tell someone, what you're doing is, is offending and crossing boundaries for me. Yeah. And, and the way, I mean, you don't have to say you like, Hey, you make me uncomfortable. That would be right. There's a good way offensive. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is like, Hey, I have some OCD issues and I don't even let my wife share my straw. Like, please, I'm not going to allow you to kiss my kid like that. Like, you know, you could touch her shoulder and stuff, but no kissing on her face. So here's the thing. The number one thing that typically stops somebody from saying something, even though their heart tells them, it's this dumb little saying that says, I feel like. 
I just mm-hmm. feel like they're going to be mad at me. I just yeah. feel like I'm going to be rude. I just feel like they're going to resent me. I just feel like I'm going to create a chaos or something. Or they're going to be mad. But, but by not-, not saying anything, you're creating the same energy. It's just inside of you. You haven't released that energy. And now that energy is between you two. And now it's a communication gap that, okay, you both take a little bit of the energy. They typically could say, I'm sorry, I didn't know. That's okay. I didn't tell you. So we're okay now though. You see what I'm saying? And again, uh, like, like Crystal said, the comment, like, as you get more confident in who you are and what your goals are, assertiveness just flows. Right. And then the next, so like, that's, I would say that's okay. That's one down. Let's just, let's just say that's, um, that's my mom. Okay. Let's just pretend that's, 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 that's bomb bomb. And so you say something to bomb bomb. That's one person you don't have to worry about next Sunday. Right. So if you say that five times, that's five people you don't have to worry about. So you take some pressure off you. Right. In five weeks, that's like 50 people or, you know, 25 depends on how many you tell. And then that's less and less and stress and more comfortable. Now, those people who say something, they gain experience really, really fast where the person who holds in and says, I just feel like things are going to go bad, or I just feel like they're going to go. So what they do is they don't come to church then, right? And so they create these mental offenses as opposed to putting it out here and the possibility of an offense, right? So I would say this, like it's a guaranteed offense on me or it's a possibility of an offense, Perfect. but the possibility yeah. of offense scares them. So they just take it themselves and then they're wrecked. Lisa, you got some? Well, I do because I think um, a lot of times we have this experience where we use the word feelings, but we're actually not necessarily <laughs> tell the feeling, right? Like if I were to say like, I feel scared when, <laughs> when you come out of the hallway and I'm not prepared for you. Like, I don't like that. If you know that I'm coming, like, you know, maybe, or it's, Maybe it's funny, but in this example, yeah, I'm, I'm making it up. Like I feel scared. I don't feel like you want to hurt me. I I feel, and then what is the feeling, right? I feel abandoned or rejected when this. And I, I will also want to say, as a therapist, um, just working with a lot of different areas in life. Number one there's not, it's not, there's not one type of boundary. There's actually at least over six kinds of boundaries. Um, we've got time boundaries, social boundaries, relationship, financial, you know, the list goes on physical, sexual, like all of those. Right. Um, and they all get crossed and we all have been there. Um, but when you're establishing something new, if we could use your example, um, Dr. Sanchez yeah. is like, Mm-hmm. No, this is now important to me. I'm aware that being home is more important than blah, 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 blah. That's a change that you weren't prepared for, Tyler, right? Like, oh, what? Yeah. Uh, being accustomed to someone putting up a new boundary is not meant to be easy. It's necessary. Yeah. It will get easier. But I have to tell you that people aren't going to like it. Okay. Correct. Yeah. If depending on their more open or what we call porous boundaries, or maybe rigid or a lot more structured, tight boundaries that we were talking about earlier. Um, again, not bad or worse or better, like just on different sides. Right. And yeah. in in my experience, because it's both for you and for other people, they're not prepared for it they're not going to like it. So if you can mentally prepare, like, no, this is important to me. This frustrates me when you talk to me like that. This is what I'm going to do. Like, that's the consequence. I love you enough to tell you this matters. And, and maybe we beat ourselves up for saying, you know what? I didn't tell people that was my boundary, but I figured it out and that's my boundary. And so I'm going to make it now, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree was right now. Correct. Cool. Chase said, but do you wait until that boundary is crossed again or do you bring it up out of the blue? Good point. When do you, when do you have that conversation? So if you miss the, 
if you miss the first time, you have to wait for the second time because you bring it up out of the clear blue, it's going to look bad. It's going to look like you're picking a fight. Like, why didn't you say something before? Now, if you're close, family, you know, maybe coworker, you could just knock on the door and be like, hey, I was just thinking about, you know, what happened yesterday. Then you can bring it up. Uh, so that really depends on how close you are to them. But I would say wait till it happens again because it might not. It might be a random event. Sure. And you don't have to I also say anything. Think probably, yeah, it's not a pattern. Not a, yeah, not a correct. It's like you two. Uh, but the severity of it, you know, if, if, if there's no chance at all, I ever want that to ever happen again, I'm having that conversation. If it's like, yeah. you know, you sat a little bit too close to me and I can go through another boundary crossed and it not be detrimental, I think I would wait. But if there's something that, you know, is really, you know, messed me up or something that I never want to deal with again, I think you probably have that conversation before it happens again. Right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> okay. So when Valencia was in kindergarten, she came home crying well, I mean, she cried, or I'm not crying, but she was whining about this situation where they were playing tag at recess and a boy kept tackling her and he pinned, he pinned her down on, on her back with him laying on her and his hands were above her hands on the ground and he had said, tag, you're it. And he wouldn't let her up. So that happened on a day. She told the teacher, she told him to get off and then told the teacher and she told us So right away. I said, listen, if he ever does that again, you scream as loud as you possibly can until you get help and then go tell the teacher and make sure he's in trouble. So she did a second time and nothing happened. So she told me the second time. So when she came home, I, we, we role played it. And I said, if it, if it happens again, you scream as loud as you can, I'm going to kick you in your privates, get off me. And he didn't. And so I told him to knee him in the nuts and she did. And he rolled off and then she told the teacher, unfortunately she got, you know, taken to the principal's office and, you know, got a letter sent home and an email and all that stuff. But I hugged her and told her she's brave and you're powerful and you never have to take anybody's crap like that again. You warn them and then you hurt them. So that's what Ty's talking about. And Lisa's, that's the physical boundary, right? Yeah. Slash sexual. I don't know if he meant it that way, but it was for sure a physical boundary, right? For sure. So, and that empowerment is what you have to do early on because, you know, and I tried to do the right thing by like, KK, tell, you know, yell at him. Second thing, tell the teacher, get him busted, get him in trouble. Third time. No, uh, -uh not playing that game. Do you see what I'm saying? They're now, if I wasn't a psychologist, I probably would have said, you know, punch him in the face the first time. Right. But I'm trying to use the right channels, you know, because, you know, I know people and I know, you know, the staff and all that kind of stuff. So I tried to use the right channels, but I promise you when she came home and she was sad because she thought she was in trouble. So I hugged her like, you're not in trouble. And I'm like, but okay, walk me through it. She walked me through it. And I'm like, what happened when you did it? She goes, he just went, oh, rolled down the hill. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> Every guy's been there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to brag about that, or, but I just need to get that out there. Like, man, if I, like Tyler said, if that's, it's a boundary, you don't wait. You yeah, just that's a severe boundary. It. Severe boundary. Correct. Um, Crystal said, and people can't read our minds. It's super important to communicate what our boundaries are to others. Agree. Yes. Correct. Um, Alicia had a question and then Brianna seconded the question. Basically, the question is, what's a good way to talk to young kids about boundaries, other people's boundaries and their own? We run in this, you know, with Stella, you know, as simply put to a four year old who can touch their butt, you know, who can see them with their shirt off. Some mm -hmm. of those simple ones. And then also, you know, those are obviously the se severe ones like you just talked about, but just mm -hmm. simple things, you know, like close talking and whispering in people's ears and Stella tries to give anyone a wet willy. Obviously there's boundaries on who we can and can't give wet willies to. So just a, a general statement on how do you talk to kids on boundaries? Yeah. Uh, okay. So the first thing is we got to help. And this is an awareness thing. So like if, if so Valencia who tends to be assertive uh, sometimes too much. So we have to pull her back and say, Hey, when you did that, did you see her face? Did you see her back up? So you have to pay attention to those body language cues and again, it's a little bit older kid. So Stella's a little bit young, but you could have her guess, like, did you hurt her feelings? Was she sad? Stuff like that. So you have to build awareness. And the best awareness piece that I teach is literally the concept of like a ripple effect. So like I say, if you're at a swimming party and you're going and you're going to run and jump and splash and you splash a bunch of people who aren't dressed in pool clothes, how do you feel? And like, oh, when I see their face, like I feel so bad. Sometimes I'd probably get spanked or I'd get grounded. Like, yeah, that's a boundary offense. And so you have to pay attention. So before you run and jump and splash, make sure everybody around you has swimming clothes on. 
Okay. So that's an awareness thing called the ripple effect. So basically you can teach the kids that and the older they get, you just ask them the questions. And when they look back in their memory, their eyes will see it. Most of us are so narrow focused. We're goal oriented. We don't see those awareness pieces, the peripheral sides, but when you play the tape in your head, you'll see it. Yeah. And so you have to get the kids to play the tape so they can pull it back. And then again, they pull that tape down, they learn. And then the next trial, they're a little closer, a little closer, a little closer. Look, there's no, there's no, I would say substitute for a learning curve. You can expedite it by more more and more and faster, 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 but there's no shortcut. There's no shortcut to hard work. There's no shortcut to a learning curve. You just got to just hammer it out. Like it. Anything you want to add to that, Lisa, or no? Um, sure. I'll throw in something. I mean, I, as someone who, like I alluded to a little bit earlier, like in early childhood, like losing those boundaries and sometimes at having a discussion about that saying like, don't hyper focus on all the wording, um, you know, don't, don't get lost in that, but just starting to have that conversation of like, is this something you like? Is this something you don't like? Um, and the creative imagination of, you know, young four-year-olds, I have a niece who's four and she likes all the colors except black and orange. And so she just is like, I'm going to give you butterfly kisses that are all the colors, but not black and orange because I don't like them. <laughs> and yeah. rip, rip warriors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means <laughs> Sergeant Bluff Warriors. He's just, his, his school, his school's black and orange. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but just in that simple example of saying, you know, if we're talking to kids and saying, just building that conversation, building stepping stones to that conversation, because someone as someone who lost some pretty important boundaries early on, it can be very difficult to know that you're allowed to have boundaries because they were stolen so early. So I guess I just want to speak to that a little bit in that sense of how that connects with how might how scary that might be to actually have to lose your boundary as a kid and then go through life and not have anyone tell you like that wasn't okay (laughs) like a lot of times I don't know about you Dr. Sanchez but sitting with people and saying they said what to you like they did what that's not okay correct to have sometimes be the frontline person telling them like Give them permission. Yeah, I didn't think it was okay, but like, I just let it happen. Or I just allowed this thing to happen because I couldn't even get no out. And yeah. I also find that the instinct of like the impulse to say no, which goes back to some of what you're talking about, Tyler, like the, I want to say no, but I end up saying yes. My impulse is to say, I'm, this doesn't feel good. I don't like this. I don't like where this is going. I don't like where this conversation is going, but I'm going to stay uncomfortable because I'm trying to please someone else and like not, not mess, mess anything up in that regard. Like, I don't want to hurt, you know, so-and-so's feelings. So I'll just, I'll just yep. put out. Yeah. And that to me is like, so gut wrenching because um, we've all been there at some yeah. point. Yep. Um, regardless I, I would like- how we got there. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to just throw in, kind of to follow up on the, you know, for your side of it, you lost boundaries. Um, and I think if we point it out, make it aware to children, then they grow up to be more aware adults that don't cross boundaries yeah. and that's right. beneficial for everyone. And that's what I want. My, that's what I want my kids to know is they can say no, they do have boundaries. They can be assertive. Um, and that then makes a more aware adult and eases conversation conversations yeah <laughs> and relationships you're doing great future. you're doing great <sighs> yeah even just saying like stella like what do you yeah. not like about this like you're telling you're making a face that like yeah you don't like what we're feeding you like can you tell me what you don't like about it or yeah, yeah you know cool. what what don't you appreciate about what we're doing or whatever whatever it may yeah. be on that mm-hmm. level so um i like it Matt in the comments said, my rule, uh, rule for my boys is ask them to stop, tell them to stop, make them stop. That's correct. Kind of the I same. like it. You know, mm-hmm. um, Alicia said, wet willies are Pappy's fault. <laughs> you started that. Huh? 
What boundary violation is that? Dude, dude exactly. we, were, we were just at some place, I don't remember, and there was like a statue, wherever we just were this last weekend, we were uh, somewhere, and she was just kind of looking at him kind of weird. I just put my, we were in a store, I don't remember what we were, and I did a wet willy on this statue, and she just died. <laughs> yeah, she tries to do it to everyone. Um, all right, a couple Bye questions. We got, we, we got some good questions here. Okay. Um, so, uh, we had like three or four different ways of basically, if you have the conversation, dad, you're crossing these boundaries. This is how I feel. This is how you make me feel all that good stuff. We do it in a good, positive way. What if they, number one, are unwilling to change. Number two, don't think it's a boundary that matters. Okay. So this is where you have to count the cost. So I've, I've said my piece, I've told them why, and they're still coming in because they don't think it's an issue. Kind of like Lisa said earlier, like I'm safe. Like, I don't know what you're afraid of. Here's the issue. You have to ask the question now, where's that ripple effect? Who's it affecting? If I say yes one more time, or I, you know, don't stick to my guns or I'm not assertive, who is that going to hurt? And I like to always talk about a T bar. So you put, you know, yes on the left, no on the right, just draw a cross. Mm -hmm. So by saying yes to this person one more time, even though I've said no for four, right? Now I have to say no to somebody, which might be my wife or my health or my kids. It's not worth it. There's no way. You don't have a right to take away my right. And so I always say it like this, especially if it's an adult, you had a chance to grow up and you have to fix what you didn't get fixed as a kid. I'm protecting my children to fix before they get broken what they don't have to fix. Do you see, or to protect what they don't have to fix. Does that make sense? And yeah. so that, that yes, no, I mean, I promise you it's like gold. Uh, it's, I can't think so what of do you tell the person though. Just that, like, look, by telling you, no, that allows me to say yes to my kids and my family. It's nothing personal to you. This is me setting up boundaries in my family. Or, or even, even, if it's an opportunity and just a feeling by, by, by saying yes to you or by allowing you to continue, here's how you're making me feel. Right. Correct. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a boundaries or a one or the other or, or opportunity. It could just be simply feelings by allowing you to still keep crossing that boundary. I'm allowing you to make me, or, you know, by you doing that now I feel this kind of type of way and I'm, I'm refusing to feel that way anymore. Correct. And like so this is the crazy thing. So, so back in the day, so like, let's say North Dakota state. So that's like 1990. Let's even say self-care was this thing where like somebody went to a spa. Self-care was a thing where like, I'm going to go get pampered. Self-care yeah. was like a vacation, right? Today, people are so stressed. People are so toxic from dealing with their stress and toxicity that breaks into their circle. Like Lisa's, you know, story, their, their, their rope is half the size, maybe even yeah. a quarter size. They don't even know who they are anymore. Yeah. People have told them who they are so many times. Like, you're, you're fine. You're fine. You're safe. You're fine. You're fine. So that now they just are so lost and wrecked that self-care is literally preventing depression. Self-care is literally like keeping me off Paxil. Self-care is like, dude, I got to do this to survive. And here's the problem. We all, talks about, we all talk about toxic people, but none of us have the strength to say, you're toxic. I can't do this. Instead, we just, you know, make up excuses or something. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so we actually don't give the real reason why we're avoiding them. We right. make up excuses. Correct. You're right. And if somebody would actually tell me, like, here's the reason I have to say no to you, there's got to be some compassion inside of me that say, wow, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know that's still time from your kids. Wow, I'm sorry. To, I, didn't, I didn't know my, your kids were afraid of me. Like, yeah, it whatever. Comes back to that benefit to both, like Lisa brought up. If you can let someone know, maybe they don't even know. Maybe they're unaware. Once mm -hmm. you know, you can't unknow. That's correct. Look, and, and years ago, like, uh, you know, I was on six boards and somebody called me and said, bro, Whew. dude, it's yeah. once, it's once, this is once a month. It literally in and out in an hour, dude, you, you're the best guy for this board. Like everybody, you know, the, the, everyone has voted for you uh, and I'm driving home on my cell phone going like, how do I say no? How do I say no? How do I say no? And I remembered, I'm like, that's my hunting time. That's my biking time. That's, that's my kid time. Just said no several times on the phone. Like, dude, I can't do they can't do they can't do they can't. And then he's like, just, just think about it. Call me tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. 
So after I got done, I texted him and said, no, it texted the next day. It said, no, it's like, it got easy. And now like since that day, I haven't been on another board. Mm. I'm not saying like boards are bad or whatever. I just know for me, it's, it's not good for me. I, I don't do well on boards. Oh, yeah, I would say it comes back to your T chart. If you say no to boards, yes. you get to say yes to other things. And right now, yes, those other and I got to coach. I got to coach all my kids' stuff. We got to do lots, lots of hunting stuff. Like every one of you had great hunting experiences with me, just doing different things, just pheasant hunt, all of that stuff became because like I finally decided, what am I doing with boards? Like what? I'm gonna, you know, my gravestone. Like man, he was a great board member. Like it's what what? Right. You know. So and listen, it goes back to that practice, and you you hit it on the head. Ty. like yeah, at one point I wasn't good at that. I said yes to everybody. Having like, it's like Lisa, having my boundaries wrecked, never having a choice, like, hey, you're sitting today, or like, hey, you have to go clean this up today. <laughs> or literally, like, hey, you got to clean up this drunk dude or he's going to go to jail. Like, it, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's, it, it, and so you grow up just saying, yes, 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 because, because I'm, I'm a, just a doer, I'm a go getter. So, like, you don't realize like you have a choice to say no until you realize all the stuff you're missing. Well, and I know it's really, really weird, but when you went to college, there was so much awareness, like, dang, Ty's gone. Right. And that's where the, and that's where a lot of dads got, get woke. It's just like, dang, what happened? So basically you messed up on me and then you made it right with Terrence and Tate. I mean, I experimented. I mean, come on. Come on. You, right. You're going to uh, strike every time. Like eight pins is still good. Look at you, bro. Okay. Look, but I'm missing a tooth. Um, Adam said, wow. Boundaries will shift our feelings sometimes in the direction we don't want them to go. But when crossed or opposed on, we feed into that t- toxicity. Hmm. yeah um contagious brianna's brianna's got a question back to kids says this uh we have two kids at home one has major boundaries with everything but the other has none the battles are never ending because neither want to budge on boundaries how do you help your kids find balance with boundaries that is healthy lisa you want a shot i pass that on to the therapist (laughs) Sure. But if I could briefly speak to part two, I think one of the other questions of what people are do as far as the word that keeps coming in my mind is like minimizing, minimizing, not a big deal, right? This is not a big deal. What, what, what's wrong with you? Like, this is just a little thing. Yeah. Um, again, I see that every day. And when you sit with someone who is generally saying, but like, it really is a big deal to me. It might not be a big deal to so-and-so like five, five people down the row, like might not be a big deal. So I, I just want to speak in some ways to regardless of that. I mean, I'm, I'm going to pull in the word perspective or perception of what makes a maximized experience or a minimized experience to cope with that. I, I I like that that part of the conversation is brought up. We won't obviously go into it, but if I could throw out another term, it would just be the window of tolerance. Like what, what do we tolerate? What are we able to tolerate? And yeah, that's going to vary across the board and say, we've got a lot of different words. Like I don't, I'm not putting up with this. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not tolerating this behavior. And so if we could even shift a little bit into like the boundary, everything boundary, nothing. Yeah. Teaching and, respect, teaching yeah. respect and saying, okay, you have space right. right now to talk about why this is your boundary, what that looks like for you. I had brothers yeah. who, you know, I'm not poking you. I'm not poking you. And they never actually poked me, but they got like real, real close. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> real close. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tyler. 100%. Both my yeah, you're, this, Both this, my is the, this is the first definition we talked about. Like what do you, it's up to you to define what you're comfortable with and then what you'll allow. True, but when stop doesn't work and your siblings are like, yes. I don't care about your stop, I'm going to do it anyway. Like, yeah. okay, I'm going to tell mom. Like, the, I told you I don't like when you come in my room. I don't like when, yeah, you know, you do these things and you're doing them anyway. And I'm feeling helpless and I already lost my boundaries, but I didn't know it. And so you're screaming no and they make fun of you for that. But anyway. Yeah. So what would you tell the parent like, so one kid has no boundaries. The other kid has really strict boundaries. Sure. Um, 
if you could bring up that pen example of just saying, well, what would it look like to inch closer? Yeah. What, what does that look like to what happens when you don't have any boundaries? You're just yeah, like okay yeah. with everything. Yeah. Like, how do you find things like, I don't know how old this child is, but like, you're really okay with everything. How much are you overriding? What are we paying yeah. attention to? Correct. Yeah, you just keep shifting like a, a seesaw, I guess. Yeah. So, okay. So let's go here yeah. then. So think yeah. about this. Um, you'd have to ask the child, like, what is it you're missing by not having a boundary? Right. And what, it, what is it that happens to you when you don't say, no, that's mine. Yeah. You see, because you have to give them awareness of what could be because they probably don't know, right? Their boundaries. So back to your original circle, how big yeah. would their boundary system be if they don't have boundaries, right? They don't have a circle. There's no rope. There's no rope. So you have to actually try to figure out how we can give them strength to say, this is mine. Cause see, that's healthy. This right. is mine. Right now, not to everything because now you have a castle and no friends. Right. Right. Are we then addressing fear though, in that sense of if I give you a rope and you get to kind of figure out like where your space is, is there fear of saying, I don't like this. Are you going to go away from me if I don't like what you're doing? Are you going to leave me? Okay. So that that's like another area of if I assert myself and tell you, I don't like this, even though I know my boundary is not being respected, I'm, I'm trying, I, I'm trying to find my voice and you do it anyway. That's hurtful. Yeah. Am I not holding my ground because I don't want to lose that relationship? Yeah, good point. I think it comes back to that awareness piece. I would I would sit both of them, them down and say, hey, by you having these boundaries, you are neglecting and making your sibling feel this way. And by you having no boundaries, you know, you feel this way and you make this happen and, and point out the awareness piece for both of them. Um, Brianna followed up and said, the one with no boundaries is wrecking herself by letting people walk all over her all the time. And the other is wrecking herself by not giving more. Their boundaries are both so extreme. Nine-year-old without keeps telling me she can't say no. So, yeah. yeah. I think, I think it sounds like fear, right? To tell so I think that I think that rope experiment would be really a good thing to do. Just, yeah. you know, hey, make a circle around you. And show me how much space is yours. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? What if you had no friends and only your space? And then the person who has nothing, you would say the same thing, right? Are you comfortable yeah. with having nothing that's yours? Everybody gets everything from you. See, and then here's the thing. We <laughs> all think how we perceive the world is how you should perceive the world. So right. if I share everything, you better share everything. And everything's mine, then I'm okay with everything is yours. Just don't touch my crap. Like, you know. <laughs> You see, I got yeah. a buddy that might be in the comments still. And that was him in college. What's <laughs> mine is yours and what's yours is mine. But my mentality is what's mine is mine. And what I give to you is now yours. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, we butted heads a lot. Yeah. I'm not going to call him out or nothing. But yeah. Well, it, interestingly, Terrence had really strict boundaries. He built a Lego thing, put it on top shelf. He didn't want anyone to touch it. <laughs> like anything that was his was like his for life. You know, it's yeah, like, it's going to be an heirloom. Broke everything he touched. Tavian had no boundaries. Tavian broke stuff that he wasn't even, yeah, permission to even enter a room. And Tavian would just like wipe his feet on junk and put a booger on it and just do whatever just to freak Terrence out. So I don't even know if he should say this on air. Do uh, it. After several, several things that we tried, like, and you know, and I'm really good at what I do. Everything failed. Nothing was working. And so I went to Terrence. And I said, here's the idea. From here on out, no hasn't worked. Consequences hasn't worked. A spanking hasn't worked. You're going to have to punch him and make him cry. And that actually made Terrence cry. Terrence is like, dude, I'm not going to hurt my own brother. What would Jesus do? And I'm like, this is <laughs> our problem, dude. <laughs> uh, and so I know it's hard. I went to Tavian. I'm like, look, the next time you do this to Terrence, he asked permission to punch you. And he's like, what? 
you're gonna you know like uh what did he say mandate abuse to your own kid you know and i'm like yep. no because you're gonna cross a line terrence has a, a permission to whack you so the very first time Terrence did it, he goes, I punched him once he didn't stop. Like, did he cry? He's like, nope. I'm like, okay, well then that's on you. So I literally started walking away. I stopped fixing the problem. I just said, buddy, this is on you. Like your dad can't fix it no more. And Tavian kept pushing buttons until Terrence made him cry. And then after that, it stopped. It was now I, I'm not saying, let me listen. Let me say this very carefully. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm saying I was at my rope as a parent because it wasn't working because Terrence who has really tight boundaries was expecting me to fix it for him. And Tavian, who has no boundaries was just like, nobody's stopping me. Do you see what I'm saying? So, oh, yeah. and they're boys and they're my kids and it, nobody was hurt. I mean, other than Tavian crying, but other than that, it stopped. And you're not right. given a recipe of what everyone should do. You're it's specific no, to each person. That's a specific situation. And we literally probably tried 20 things. Yeah. I, again, thinking of the rope though, if everyone were to like, Hey, I'm like giving you a rope and I want to see what you do with it. Like yeah. just that experience of taking, it could take like 30 minutes to just sit with like, what am I comfortable with? Yeah. Like, I, I was able to do it with someone and she was like, wow, like I feel at home in this space. I feel relaxed. Like I can be myself. And yeah. what I actually did with her was I just put a box of crayons in her circle on the floor. Yeah. And impulse, she wanted to walk, whack it away. Like I didn't ask for those. And we talked about it, but it was that I did, like, no, I didn't ask you. Yeah. There. And immediately walls went up. Like you could see them. Yeah. There was no boundary anymore. It was now a wall. And I think being able to explore that in a very dynamic, active way helps a visual person say, oh, I, I do have emotions. I do have a response when something comes at me and I didn't ask for it. So really, yeah. really powerful stuff. Yeah. And with both kids, you have to help them understand, like, in your room, find a safe box, find a space, find something where you can say, this is just mine. And then these are shareables. You get permission to say that, but you don't get permission to say everything is off limits. You don't get permission to say everything is open. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because both of those wreck, wreck the individual. They do. In different yeah. I think it'd be cool. We talked about this during the COVID episode. Um, I like that awareness piece. If you do it as a family, yes, there, there's moments where we sit down and, you know, can you imagine if you went around the room and said, okay, dad, mom, four siblings or whoever it is, you know, dad, what, what's your awareness piece and wh where's your boundaries on this topic? And then yeah. go around the room and share and mom, where are you at on this? And so it's not just calling out one or two kids, but, yeah. you know, we have an open discussion and, yeah. you know, have a dad and a mom say, you know, I'm not even okay with this boundary or here's where the line is. I think that'd be beneficial. Um, yeah. It builds Bridget. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Bridget said, uh, yes to everyone means no to me. Yeah. There you go. Dude, say that again. That is it. <laughs> yes to everyone means no to me. Wah, 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 wah. I need a podcast. Five ninety nine. Ty does it better. Do it, Ty. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I like Dude. hitting the uh, ESPN. Wah, wah button. Na, na, na. Yeah. Um, there you go. It's already like a wrestling match. Or Brianna says, it's already like a wrestling match over here with two older ones. I'll try the rope. I suggest that yeah. <laughs> yeah. family meeting. <laughs> That's honor. I vote the rope. <laughs> right. Um, Bridget responded and said, I feel a boundary is a feeling God gave you for a reason. What wrong path are you going down? If you already, um, are, if you allow people to cross your boundary. Um, and that was in response to Alicia said, letting people push your boundaries little by little in a way, desensitizing you, which is a scary, slippery slope. I'm not going to say scary, should... slippery slope again. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> a, boundary, a, 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 down, a, a downhill. A decline. I don't like decline. it. Decline. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Um, two two quick questions, and then we'll we'll close this up. We went a little long, but this is, okay. I think, really good stuff. Okay. Um, one, how do you establish boundaries for people that have different morals than you? So for instance, we're all Christians on here. Um, there's definitely things that I don't allow in my house personally, alcohol, um, you know, cussing, R-rated movies. Um, and so where's that boundary from? Let's say I bring someone in or I go to someone else's house. 
and their morals are different, um, where do you, where do you draw the line on boundaries? Yeah. Because at that point it's a preference. Yeah. So based on morals. I would say this, like it, again, that first line is really, really important. So like we've had, you know, professional people over like, for, you know, business, whatever, and they'll bring us a housewarming guest, gift, which is like alcohol or wine or something we don't drink. So I don't say, oh, bro, like we're Christians, we don't do this because other people who are Christians, they have a different boundary. Okay. So what we say is just like, oh, thank you for the housewarming gift, uh, but we don't drink. And so it's just, we just put it away and uh, we'll say, thank you. That was so kind. We went out of your way to do something like that, you know, and then we just put it up and then we don't use it. Um, after that, it, it changes the game a little bit because they question where we invite them out or how we invite them out, but it levels up our system on a boundary system where we're at together. Does that make sense? If, I mean, if my, we, my follow-up would be then what if every time they come over, they bring a, a thing of wine and you never let them know. Yeah. See, then that's, that's on you. Like, you know how Bridget said, like saying yes to them is saying no to me. Like how, when am I going to say it? And then if like after the fourth time they bring wine over, aren't they going to say, Hey, aren't you going to open one of those bottles? Right. And now I'm going to be like, <laughs> like, Oh, by the way, after you spend 200 bucks on us, like we don't, we don't do that. Like now, see, now it's awkward. Do you see it's like when someone calls you the wrong name for too long and you just have to go with it. Cause you can't be like, Oh, by the way, my name's not Frank. It's Tyler. You're Dude, like, well, okay. Why did you tell me six months ago. Why are you now? One hundred percent. That's a. I, I think you got to say it right away. You have to. In yeah. second grade, the lady called me Paul, and I kept changing the paper. And she <laughs> kept correcting me because well, I had dyslexia, so she she corrected all my papers. She just assumed I was making a mistake, and I kept telling her my name's Raul, and she was like, "It's Paul." And so, <laughs> mom went to conferences and the first nine week conferences and went off on this lady. I'm not kidding, bro. Your camera went out. Oh. She went off on her and the lady was like, well, I just assumed she's like, you don't assume nothing. My son's told you and show <laughs> <laughs> the town, baby. Uh, but this is me just like after a few times, I've just, you know, I had no boundaries. I just wrecked as a kid. So it's like, okay, yeah. she's going to call me Paul. Yeah. Because on the, fl- <laughs> on, on the flip side of that analogy, let's say I'm the person that thinks I'm doing something awesome to you. Uh, by bringing you, no, you know, or, or, or anything else, don't even use wine, use something else. But yeah. let, let's just say, you know, a restaurant that that you don't like, and I keep buying you gift cards to there, mm-hmm. you know, at some point, then you're like, dude, I got $400 worth of gift cards, you know, I'm not even using now. Now I'm like, dude, I wasted my money or my time or my effort, something that, you know, has been offensive to you or crossing boundaries. Yeah, I think in both case scenario, I'd rather you just tell me right away. Yeah, no, a r- on, real life- on either side of it. Real life scenario. Okay. So we, we, we bow hunt, you know, we turkey hunt, we pheasant hunt. So we have a lot of wild game. There is nothing like fajita, like, you know, deer. It's just like carne asada on another level. But what happens is like some people come over and they don't like deer. And so when we invite them over, I'll, quick question. Do you ever had venison? Oh yeah. It's gross. Nasty. Would you try it again? I cook it differently. No, thank you. So, you know, we had some people over who bow hunt and their wives didn't eat, don't eat deer. So we made two and I just very clear. I'm not trying to fool them. Alicia is one of those who just doesn't like the venison. We make beef and we make uh, venison. I ain't trying to, okay, the first time they come over, I ask a question. I'm not going to try and fix the, you know, push her boundary or whatever, because then she's not going to come over or be mad at me or something. You know what I'm saying? So like on a real life scenario, you know, just because we know better and it's deer, like, Hey, do you like this stuff? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try and wreck them. You know what I mean? It goes back to what Lisa said, you know, like, for us to say like no you will like venison because i like venison it's really yeah. good i promise you yeah like, dude i don't don't tell me what no. i like see that's the that's the aggressive boundary so i'm going to push into you with aggression and it's on you to say no or then to cut the if i don't take the no then cut it because i'm toxic to you all right two last right? two questions uh they kind of go together they're both on marriage says this um one of them says i definitely crave me time in isolation but when i do it makes my sp- my spouse feel neglected and not loved my faust <laughs> i got my you bro i got spouse, you my, bad. my, bad. my, my spouse, spouse. My if i spouse. hold my lip over the Ow. gap it Ow. feels my better spouse. my spouse there you go. if uh <laughs> it makes my spouse feel negative and uh neglected okay but, so we but, we but then they, so then they feel guilty by having the me time but they need me time mm-hmm. yes so look, so, you know, I've been doing this a long time, like 23 years, whatever, and long days. Uh, I know that you have to have a buffer. So come home and go right to a workout. 
come home, literally lock the bathroom door, take a 20 minute dump. Like I'm just, I'm vulnerable. Like I'm just being honest. Like, uh, so I mean, not that you're like sitting there doing that the whole time, but like you're in the bathroom with the door lock, like undressing. Like, oh, every checking, guy knows like, what you're talking about. It's yeah. Women. Just, you know, it's like, painful. Hey, I'm, I'm taking a dump. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, like, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So look, I, I don't care. I'm vulnerable. This is what we do. Like, I'm just, this is who I am. But, uh, so it became long. And so what happens, I'm just sitting in there just hanging out. And so Stacy will come in now and, and sh- I'm away. And she will give me some time. And then she comes in and captures me when I'm there and she'll talk to me and she catch up. We could catch up on the day. So in the beginning, when I would come home, I would have to like go hide, get away, like go to the man cave, whatever, because like, you just want to veg out or worst case scenario. Don't try to multitask. Don't do it. So you're sitting in the living room trying to watch ESPN or a hunting show and your wife starts talking to you and you're just like looking at the TV, just like, uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I got you. Because then what's going to happen is you're going to forget to pick your kid up tomorrow and then you're really in big trouble. So you can't, you you can't multitask that stuff, you know? And so the best thing I could teach you is to have a buffer system. And here's what that looks like. So you come in, you hug your spouse, you offer some nurturance. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, You know, my day was good. I'm going to go change. I'm going to go on a run or I'm going to go on a bike ride quick, or I'm going to go do my thing. And you have to figure out a way where you can go reboot. I call those recovery skills. If you don't recover, you're going to carry that stress in your relationship and you're going to end up wrecking a relationship or you guys are going to have other problems. So you got to have a quick recovery, like a quick bike ride, a quick workout, you know, whatever. If you play video games, just but put a limit on it. So like 30 minutes just to reset, then come back in and be with the kids, be with the family, because it's not your kids or your wife's or your husband's fault that you have that kind of a job. And it's not fair to your wife or your husband or your children that you go kill it at work and then you come home and then you're a bum. Like, what's the point of you killing it somewhere and then you're failing at home? Like, we got that upside down. You really need to be killing it at home and just be okay at work. But if you can kill it at work, then bro, then you can kill it at, at you know, home, like you both ways. So I see that a lot where like high power women, high power men, they kind of come home and they're like, man, I already did my part and they just check out. Well, then that those couples grow apart and you can't do I was, that. I was told uh, in pre-marriage counseling that um, that communication about what that looks like is the key. Yeah. So whatever you and your spouse determine as your buffer time, make sure that it's aware of it. So you don't come yeah. home and go do that. And your spouse like, what are you doing? And you're like, well, I'm, you know, if I do this, then I'm better the rest of the night. But it's a conversation. Hey, Alicia, or hey, Tyler, I need 40 minutes when I get home. And then after that 40 minutes, I'm all in as a husband and father. But I need that time because here's why. And there's an understanding going into it that yeah. that's what you're going to do. Yeah, because if you don't recover from that stress, you carry all that stress from your work into. So if that's clients or you know numbers or banking, whatever that job is, you carry that job into your, your life at home. And let's just say like, just use a cup. Like if you're 20% left, you're giving your loved ones 20% of you when you're giving everybody else in life, 110, 120, it's not fair to them. I get that it's not fair to you either. Like you killed it at work, whatever, but it's, it's the best case scenario. If you learn how to recover a for your mental health and your self-care and B for your, you know, husband and your kids. Yeah. Right. Sweet. Anything else you got Lisa on that? Um, yeah, just the mindfulness piece and maybe acknowledging or having open discussions, building communication about what that trigger is, because oftentimes, I guess I found, you know, through different stories or just different, um, working with different people, you don't know where that takes them back to, um, whether it's again, these bigger concepts that we talk about as, abandonment, loss, grieving, neglect, right? Bringing up this Mm -hmm. idea of like, oh, I don't matter to you, you know, and being able to talk about this is what matters to me. Like you matter to me. So this is what I need. This is what I need, you know, and coming at it in a way that says, can we be open about our triggers and where this takes me? Um, You know, slightly different example, but I remember visiting my, my parents at home at one point I was an adult and I went back and I had this like bathing suit and I really didn't care because it was like my family, 
I, I really just didn't care. And my mom made a comment and I turned 13 again. And it was like, I'm a grown woman. I get to choose what I want to wear. Like, and I felt like, man, that took me back. And I actually talked with her about it later. And it said, did you notice that I turned all teenager on you? Like, here's what was going on. There was, it brought me back to this place and Yes, it's vulnerable, but if you have like a spouse or a really good friend and say like, I understand how that can, how that took you back there. That's not how I'm intending my desire for self-care. Like, can we be, I don't know, I'm not finishing my thought, but can I just be mindful that there's something deeper underneath? Yeah. Yeah we can get to that. We can acknowledge like, man, neglect is like hard. Abandonment is, uh, wow. I didn't realize Mm -hmm. I, I put you in, you went to that place. I didn't put you there, but I didn't realize that what I did or didn't do put you in that place. And I'm sorry that you feel neglected when I go do this for me. This is not what I'm intending. How do we, how do we build from there? Right. That's really good. So like, so the person who's asking like, uh, you know, Hey, I want some self-care time and I feel bad because my spouse feels neglected. So the person who wants that independent time incidentally, accidentally triggered, uh, what would we, what I would term a ghost fight. And the ghost fight is I'm feeling abandoned. Like I was when I was like you say, in Lisa 13. And so it's not about me not giving enough attention to my spouse. And now he's abandoned. I didn't abandon them or I didn't neglect them, but I triggered a ghost fight. Now in this person's head, they're thinking, great. So my, you know, husband is like my dad or like my wife is just like my mom. And so we got to, again, have conversations. Pardon? I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. Like what? Now you're going to hurt me too. So that's exactly, that's exactly right. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Any finishing thoughts? I got one. Um, if you guys go ahead, but you go right ahead. All right. Um, I think if I could sum up kind of what you guys have said, um, what I think, what kind of a takeaway piece, um, would be really probably awareness, um, awareness on our end of if we're the one being feeling like our boundaries are crossed and then awareness on the person crossing boundaries. Um, I just jotted down this, that if we express the way we feel, we allow the other person to understand what they're doing. And I think it came up multiple times that we don't, a lot of people don't, can't read our minds. Some of them don't know. Some of them are adults and no one has had that uncomfortable conversation to say, do you know really what you're doing? You know, do you really know how you make people feel when you do that? And I think you said it, dad, it's either a guaranteed hurt that we feel or a potential hurt that they feel. And that comes back to my line. I just said it differently. Either I'm offended or I offend others. Um, it's that same piece that we can keep going through life feeling hurt and feeling pain and whatever those feelings are when your boundaries are crossed, whatever that boundary is, there's, is a negative feeling, um, or a potential hurt by letting them know, Hey dad, do you really know how you make me feel when, you know, or do you, do you see this at all? Mm -hmm. Um, I think so funny the way we said we should talk to kids about it is actually the way we probably should handle it with adults as well. You know, facts, big uh, facts. I don't think, I don't think there's anything giant facts sitting down and saying, Hey, <laughs> let me show you what this does to your friends. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So, okay. So let's put this into a physical situation. So if I was walking and I stepped on your toe and you go, Whoa, bro, my toe, I'm not going to say that's okay, bro. Like I've lost 15 pounds. I'm not that heavy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna be like, it's okay. It's your big toe. Like you got nine others. Right. right. If it's a physical issue, people get it. Right. Typically. But because it's emotional, like, bro, can you give me some space? Like, you're good, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Mm-hmm. I brush my teeth today. Do you see what I mean? So hey, we got to just get to that point of like, I need to say it. And then however that potentially is taken on them, that's not on me. Yep. Now, I mean, obviously you're not being abusive, right. Or offensive, like, you know, racist stuff, but you're just protecting me. Like, Hey, don't step on my toe. Hey, don't do this. Yep. Yeah. So awesome. I think it comes back to one of the main things we talk about on this podcast all the time is, you know, we, we talk, we call it like real talk people 
or just or uh, accountability partners, whatever you want to call it, mentors. But yeah, you've got to have people in your life that will have that. Well, I I, I call it a big brother conversation. But yeah, I'm like, dude, truth. You do you know what you're doing? Like, you know, I, there's just got to be people, whether that's a spouse, a best friend, a mentor, a pastor, um, yeah. a small group. You know, whatever that a best buddy, whatever that looks like to say like. Hey, you know, I noticed you've been doing, you know, I got like three or four people in my life that would do that. And that's all to prevent me from offending and hurting other people. You know, yeah, I would say that need, we need those people in our life and yeah. I, we can point out people that don't have them. We're yeah. like, yeah, I, how, and are I, you, how are you this old? And no one's told you that what you're doing hurts people. Yeah. And you know, you know, this. we talk about this on the podcast team too, is, is like, if you have somebody who doesn't have a coach, that, that dude's stuck. He's stagnant. Like, you know, you have to be growing. And you're talking about life coach, not sports coach. You're talking about someone coaching you. A life coach, a, a podcast coach, a, you know, performance coach, a business buddy, coach, mentor, anyone. a mentor, a buddy, you know, UFC coach, whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, a biking coach. So you don't cramp up, you know, CrossFit coach, like somebody's barking at you to make you better. If you don't have that, you're stagnant. So it's that simple. Then you yeah. get around those people and they're like, why are you trying to kill it? It's like, uh, I was going to get a shirt, but mom always talks about of stuff just because I just get these random ideas, but <laughs> it says obsessive is a word. Lazy people throw at, you know, successful people. I was like, I'm buying that. She's like, you know, you're not and like she takes it out yeah. of the cart. <laughs> I, mean, <it's> true. <laughs> I know right? it's facts. Right. But like, I don't need to be wearing that shirt, you know, but yeah. So it's just like that. Like, like you know, you're right. Ty, hundred percent. Sweet. All right. Cool. That's awesome. Well, yeah. we're going to end this yeah. podcast and uh, continue to go renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty and find what's awesome about that in every situation. Hopefully I get my tooth fixed tomorrow and uh, my lisp can be gone. Yes. Until then, have a great night. We love Peace. you. See you all later. Peace out. I had to realize what's inside of me For all of the people that lied to me For all of the people that said I would fall off Oh boy, what a time to be alive I wrote this for everyone, feel like they counted out You need to look in the mirror, tell yourself